I am going to do this one a little differently so I can read without shaking it around. <laughs> um, so in page one, who was Levi? And I think this is the page that I sent to you that you, you didn't have. It's probably on your phone if you want to pause it and um, get that or, so you can read it. But once you've, um, once you've got it and you're ready, go ahead and restart it and I'm going to start reading where it says here. Who was Levi? In response to the inquiries from many friends of the Aquarian Gospel of Jesus the Christ for some information regarding the transcriber, we herewith give a short sketch. It was his great desire that each one should have the message regardless of the messenger. Levi, Levi H. Dowling was born Saturday morning, May 18th in 1844 at Belleville, Ohio. His father, a Scotch-Welch descent, was a pioneer preacher among the disciples of Christ. Levi was always a student of the deeper things of life. At the age of 13, in his first public debate, he took the negative side against Presbyterian elder on the everlasting punishment of the world, of the wicked, I'm sorry. Uh, we've heard Derek Prince talk about that, <laughs> the everlasting punishment. Um, he began preaching at the age of 16, and at the age of 18 was pastor of a small church. He entered the United States Army at the age of 20 as chaplain, and served in his capacity to the end of the Civil War. In 19, I mean, sorry, in 1866 and 67, he was a uh, student at Northwestern Christian University at Indianapolis, Indiana. And the next year he began publishing a Sunday, uh, Sunday school literature, uh, issuing Sunday school lesson plan papers, songbooks, and a children's Sunday school paper. Much of this time that was devoted to the cause of prohibition. He was a graduate of two medical colleges and practiced medicine for a number of years. He finally retired from the medical profession to resume literary work. Early in life, when but a mere lad, he had a vision in which he was told that he was to build a white city. This vision was repeated three times with years intervening. The building of the white city was the Aquarian Gospel of Jesus the Christ. The book was transcribed between the early morning hours of 2 and 6, the absolutely quiet hours. Levi passed from earth life August 13th, 1911. And I'm going to go ahead and read the introduction on page 3 because um, it, it literally... Uh, I'm, I'm going to read through um, page five on the top. So starting on page three, the introduction by Eva S. Dowling, scribed to the messenger. It says the book. The full title of this book is the Aquarian Age Gospel of Jesus, the Christ of the Piscean Age. And the critical reader is apt to ask a number of pertinent questions concerning it. Among the many anticipated questions are these and are perhaps the most important. What is an age? What is the Piscean Age? What is the Aquarian Age? What is meant by the Christ as the word is used in this book? What relationship existed between Jesus of Nazareth and the Christ? Who is Levi, the transcriber of this book? And what are Akashic records? Number one, what is an age? Astronomers tell us that our sun and its family of planets revolve around a central sun. And it could very well look like that to them, although we know that the, that's not the way it is. It just appears that way in the firmament. Um, but they're saying that it revolves around a central sun, which is millions of miles distant, and that it requires something less than 26,000 years to make one resolution. Revolution, I'm sorry. His orbit is called the Zodiac. Now we know the Zodiac is something that God set up 
for us to see signs in the heavens, uh, which is divided into 12 signs, familiar known as Aries, Taurus, Gemini, Cancer, Leo, Virgo, Libra, Scorpio, Sagittarius, Capricorn, Aquarius, and Pisces. It requires our solar system a little more than 2100 years to pass through one of these signs and at that time and in, and this time is the measurement of an age of dispension because of what astronomer, astronomers call the precision of the equinoxes. The movement of the sun through the signs of the zodiac is in order reverse from the one given above. Uh, so we're going from Piscean age to Aquarian age. The exact time of the beginning of an age regarding of this matter is in is a disagreement among astronomers. But in this introduction, we are not called upon to give the reasons of the various investigations for their opinions. There are enough well authenticated facts for our present purposes, it is conceded by all critical students that the sun entered the zodiacal sign Taurus in the days of our historic Adam, and I'm getting ready to change pages here, when the Taurian age began. The reason I'm out here is because I'm thinking you're going to see the little birds. Um, not sure which way they are, but they got a nest Oh, up, up that way. Anyway, the Torian age began around the time of Adam, and Abraham lived not far from the beginning of the Aryan age, which is Aries, when the sun entered the side of Aries. About the time of the rise of the Roman Empire, the sun entered the sign of Pisces. That's when Jesus was around the fishes. And the Piscean age began so that early in this age Jesus of Nazareth lived. Now, it doesn't say this in here, but that also has a lot to do with water baptism, the flood, coming out of the flood in our minds. Water baptism is being raised from the dead. Those people were flooded. The whole world was flooded. God punished them. It was punishment. So um, when, we, when we talk about this, it's... This is deep stuff. I could share a lot about this with you. Number two, what is the Piscean Age? This question requires further consideration of the Piscean Age, which is identical with the Christian dispensation. The word Pisces means fish. The sign is known as a water sign. And the word, uh, and, and the Piscean Age has been distinctly the age of the fish and its element water. In the establishment of the great institutions, John the Harbinger and Jesus both introduced the rite of water baptism, which has been used in some form in all of so-called Christian churches and cults even to the present time. Water is the true symbol of purification. Jesus himself said to the Harbinger before he was baptized, all the men must be washed, symbolic of the cleansing of the soul. Aquarian Gospel 64, verse 7. Fish was a Christian symbol in the earlier centuries to the Christian dispensation. The fish was everywhere, used as a symbol. In his remarkable book, Christian Iconography, Didron says the fish, in the opinion of of antiquarians generally is the symbol of Jesus Christ. The fish is sculptured upon a number of Christian monuments and more particularly upon the ancient sarcophagi. It is also upon metals bearing the name of our Savior and also upon engraved stones, cameos and intaglios. <clears throat> the fish is also to be remarked upon the amulets worn suspended from the needs uh, from the necks by children and upon ancient glasses and sculptured lamps 
It was a pretty common sign for Christians. Baptismal fronts are more popularly ornamented with the fish. The fish is constantly exhibited placed upon the dish in the middle of the table at the Last Supper among the loaves, knives, and cups used at the banquet. In the writings of Tertullian, we find this statement, We are little fishes and in Christ our great fish. The last 2,000 years comprising the Piscean Age has certainly been one of water, and the water and, and the many uses of that element have been emphasized. The sea and lake, the river navigation, has been brought to a high degree of efficiency. And, and quite honestly now, before I read number three here, um, we just moved in the last 200 years into flying vehicles. I mean, it's been only a couple, maybe a hundred years or more that we've been in planes and jets and rockets and all this stuff. So um, we really just moved into an air age, which is number three here. What is the Aquarian age? The human race is today standing upon the cusp of the Piscean Aquarian ages. In other words, we transfer it. Aquarius is an air sign and the new age is already noted for remarkable intentions for the use of air such as radio broadcasting television broadcasting cds or, i mean uh, signals for radio or cell phones um electro electricity magnetism etc men navigate the air as fish do the sea and send their thoughts, this is important, send their thoughts spinning around the world with the speed of lightning. That's because we have found out scientifically that we actually send radio waves out of our brain when we think thoughts. So we're really sending thoughts out there into the world. So the word Aquarius is derived from the Latin word aqua, meaning water. Aquarius is, however, the water bearer and the symbol of the sign which is the 11th sign of the zodiac. It, it's a man carrying in his right hand a pitcher of water. Jesus referred to the beginning of Aquarius age in these words. And then the man who bears the pitcher will walk forth across an arc of heaven. The sign and signet of the Son of Man will stand forth in the eastern sky. The wise will then lift up their heads and know that the redemption of the earth is near. Aquarian Gospel 157, verse 29 and 30. The Aquarian age is preeminently a spiritual age and the spiritual side of the great lessons that Jesus gave to the world may now be comprehended by multitudes of people. For the many are now coming into an advanced stage of spiritual consciousness. So with much proprietary, this book is called The Aquarian or Spiritual Gospel of Jesus the Christ, an important event. The transfer of dominion from one age to another is an important event in the world of cherubim and seraphim. Among the manuscripts of Levi, we have found a most remarkable paper describing the transfer of dominion from the Piscean Age to the Aquarian Age, but it is difficult to determine whether it is a recital of fact or a prophetic statement, but we produced the paper in full. And I will pause so you can take a break and we'll read that next, The Cusp of the Ages.